Hi, this is Kim Watson. Welcome to my video on understanding statistics in trading. Do you know, I spend a lot of time obviously on analysis, etc. on this uh, YouTube channel of ours, but um, I just thought I would uh, throw my two penny worth in about something that I've is very dear to me. I love statistics, so I thought, well, here goes. Let's give them something on statistics and understanding the statistics in particular. So um, most educators promote their wares based on either um, the fact that they've uh, listened to me. I've been, uh, I'm a trading genius. I've been taught by all the best, and I'll reel off all these people out in America or somewhere else and tell you about their pedigree. Or, of course, they'll tell you they've got a strategy with X percent probability and which has made me uh, X amount of money over a certain period. So they'll come to you in this different way or one of these ways generally. Of course, the problem with the former is you have no current idea of how well their strategies work in the current markets. I mean, they're, they're literally um, some of these uh, geniuses I see out there and they've been out in the same old same old for about 30 years and realistically the market's not quite the same as they were 30 years ago um, so there may be something slightly adrift there and of course then there's um, the, the chappy that uh, got a lot of young up and coming um, people in this market and they, they work in the territory of uh, statistics and damn lies effectively they curve fit things and show you, um, uh, Charlie, Charlie's shown you videos of how they uh, show you, here's today's results. Uh, they've carefully uh, left all the losses out of it and just show you the winning decisions or vice versa. Uh, well, that's the way they do it. <laughs> so it's really a case of understanding the statistics and it, regardless of where you learn your strategy, it's key. So even if you're learning something from Charlie and myself, I would all say, always say, go and test it for yourself and do your own analysis on it. People that do this get better results. The reason is they have a little bit more belief in what they're doing. And that's part of what the statistics are done for in the first place. Now, uh, this can be done, of course, in a number of ways. And I used to really slag anyone off for the fag packet version. But realistically, the data that is on, on the back of a cigarette packet these days, all that drawing is probably quite minimal. Um, there's a, probably a slightly more thorough version needed with an A4 envelope or something <laughs> I have been known to use. Um, and good enough. You know, don't don't go much beyond this if you if you feel that you're, it's good enough for the uh, the A4 envelope. I've certainly done it myself and found it good enough for what I needed at the time. I needed two of them. Um, of course, you can use the Excel spreadsheet and measure everything version. I've been guilty of this in the past and completely tied myself in knots. But uh, you can still limit things down and do a good Excel spreadsheet, and it's very easy to adjust and look at. Um, of course, there's some fancy software out there, and again, some of these ver uh, softwares uh, versions out there and software toys that you can play with are brilliant. Um, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to use, um, the important thing is you, you go and do it. Then you start find yourself that you've got the most important part: the statistics themselves. So you've got the numbers, you've crunched them. How good is it? Um, what is important to you? Is it uh, high probability? Or are you looking for high returns? Now, I say one or the other here because I, I know um, a lot of people think probably think they do go together. And it would be nice because the high probability is generally uh, smaller losses, smaller, but uh, um, uh, smaller profits. Um, so it, they seem to go along together. There. You, you end up with very small moves. Uh, and so in some of these markets, in current markets, it may, they may be ideal almost. Um, to be running some of these but if you if you want to get the sort of higher returns often they're lower probability trades it's, it's, as I say they're going to hand sometimes you get this nice area in between which works for quite a long while and if you can fit yourself into that pocket you're on a runner but of course if it comes into that pocket at one stage it will come out of the pocket at another stage but we'll talk about that in a moment when you start looking at the results we move on to the results themselves uh, do you then start looking at the variables to optimize these potential outcomes? For example, if um, you had a um, retracement trade that's running back to a moving average, um, if you decided to use a higher time frame or a higher period moving average, uh, which was a little bit further away from price, does it give you a better outcome? And then outcomes start working and this gets back to what I was just saying in terms of if you're looking at the outcome it may give me fewer winning trades but is the differentials between those 
the, the, the high probability one with a lower income to the lower probability with a higher income, does the, high, the amount you make on income improve? These are the things you've got to consider when you're using statistics in trading. Um, it's, as I say, it's, it, it, these are important. Um, realistically, with any strategy, you could end up with a number of variables which you can test, and you're sure you could really, you can, I've just given you a very simplified process. Running all the variables, there's no, if you've got time and you do that, it's great, but um, don't, what I don't want to do is put off people that think, well, actually, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't, I won't bother doing all this testing, it's too too onerous, I can't, you know, won't be able to do it. Get your, get your the A4 sheet out there and um, just do it, and don't keep playing about with your variables. What often happens otherwise is you end up with something so optimized um, that, and, and what's happened in the past uh, for a amount of time, it, it's um, overly optimized and, uh, to that period that you've back tested. Um, so it, it, it may not work out so well in the future. And this is what coming on to the, the important thing. Up to the point of today, what's happened in the past is fact. That's what happened. That's where the price went. That's what happened. That is pure fact. Thus, if you've got a 62% win rate over that period, simply calculated by number of wins divided by number of potential trades, of course, if you're not too sure how to work your win rate out, um, that is what has happened and it cannot be changed. You can't go back there and change it unless, of course, you change the strategy. Uh, so if you stick in your strategy, if it had a 62%, it can't be changed. It, it's done. That's the past. Uh, this goes for all the figures and optimization you did. The results are there and true for that period. So it's done. That moves me on to, of course, the future. Now, there is absolute and absolutely no no absolute certainty. See, there you go. There's a tongue twister. There's no absolute certainty as we move forward in, in time. And this is where particularly those that are overly... Um, optimized start to fail quite quickly in, in a lot of cases and you you hear of these uh, different things that are being offered with mt4 etc these robots and everything else they've worked well for the far past three months because they worked on that that market but remember the markets themselves aren't what happened yesterday might not happen today and certainly may not happen the next day and the next day and the next day the, the things that there's differentials that come in all the time it's the great unknown it is about trading the odds and importantly keeping a running record to see how the strategy is running if you're taking something and you've tested it and to ensure you're not, you're seeing if it's being too overly curfitted you'll see when it's over curfitted because generally it starts running off the, the boil very uh, quite quickly if things change if it's still running quite well and it's pretty standard well then you, you've got something that may last a lot longer um, okay I've already said this really, but for those strategies that have been overly curve fitted, uh, the trade environment changes significantly, the win rate, win rate may well fall, may get better, um, but uh, it will certainly change. Okay, um, then, then you've got this point, and this is the important, important, important point about statistics. People get statistics and they say it's got a 64 or 50% win rate, whatever win rate it is, but that is over the trading window. And I'll put trading window here because it's important. When you're doing your testing, the important thing is if you do it over a 24-hour window, are you up 24 hours a day to trade all these setups? Okay, if you're putting it into a machine, it's all going to be automated trading. Sure, take them all, put them all in there and calculate them all. But I suggest that you have the trading window is the time that you're able to trade. And that's so for me personally, my trading window is really between eight and four. Um, if the setups come in there, although I generally tighten it up to about eight and three these days. So that anything that happens in there is really what I prefer to be trading. If it sets up between three and four, I may catch it. So I'm really looking at that eight three zone. Really, that's my trading window. So if I start missing them, um, of course, I've just changed the stats, haven't I? Because if I lose a, miss a loser, well, I might have a slightly better outcome. May do, may not. Um, but the, the, I've changed the stats. So as soon as you miss something, you've changed the stats. 
Now, the results of a, a strategy are pretty, pretty random, and this is one of the biggest factors that traders don't really get to grips with at times, so particularly when they're new to the trading and they expect things. So if, you, if, they, if you think you've got 50% rim rate, they see, it, they see it as coming out a bit like this, like win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. Okay, they can accept a couple of losses if they're followed by a couple of wins, and, and this, is, this, this is how it would be nice in terms of how I'll probably – Rather not trade the the, 19, the 20th one if that's what happens. Uh, if I've already had the 10, the 50% win rate by the time at 19, we could scrap 20A. Uh, but seriously, I've already changed. I'm just talking about changing the the, the probability by doing too well in a small period, because I've just taken a, a little a little window of 20 trades there. Realistically, you need something much more than that, 30, 40 trades to be uh, giving you a probability or reasonable probability you can stick by 20 isn't really sufficient i just wanted to show you this and then show you something that might be called reality at times and because things may change around i can still have a 50 percent win rate here but my win rate is like win loss win loss 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 win well oh, i'm genius at this point here but i'm in a I'm complete failure am i uh oh i'll finish off a couple of wins but that's how the markets run now um of course, you've heard the saying that uh, things, bad things, come in threes. Well, they sometimes come in fours. <laughs> they may come, they come, may come in sixes. Um, who knows? Uh, but then you may get that winning flow that, uh, you, as I say, you think to yourself a bit of a trading god. So, if you miss any of the winning or losing trades, your results may be worse or better than the tests. So, better than your probability and your calculations. Taking this into account into the stats. So. Up until now, I've taken it purely. That you've not adjusted anything based on the results. You've just taken the taken the trade when you've been there, or not taken the trade. So that if you're missing some, of course, it's blown it a little bit. But then you get the um, adjustment person. Um, they they as soon as they decide to leave a trade or use a different size position, they actually start using taking away the stat. The stats have suddenly become um, a little bit void because you, as soon as you adjust things differently to what you had uh, now of course over a period you may have to adjust things don't get me wrong but and you, you may adjust things and curve things i say curve things but as things change you say actually well i can't take the the size of the size of trade that i would have taken before because of this uh, the, the the targets are now bigger the stops are bigger and i've got to change to, to the percentage of trade per trade um well uh Oh, sorry, percentage position per trade may have to change slightly, but some things in the main is you want to keep things as constant as possible because there's enough variables out there without adding you. If you take the first uh, the strategy that's based on a re reward of two to one, um, and uh, the, the, so you've got a 50% win rate. You take 20 trades. In theory, it would give you uh, effectively 10 times two. That's the uh, two to one, but uh, times your target value, whatever that was, um, and 10 times one um, would be your stop value. So the results would be uh, 10 times the target value less the stop value. In rough terms, if we, if we let's say we were taking 20 point uh, 20 points for a win, 10 points for a loss, and uh, we we're trading a pound a bit, the wins would give us 200 quid, the losses would give us. Uh, uh, or take away from us 100, uh, that would net us 100 pounds um, on the 20 trades at that level. So you can see 50% win rate, a lot of people, again, stats, you don't want to be trading as low as 50%. We, I've only looked at a risk of reward of two to one. You make that three to, it's providing it works. <laughs> it's got the got enough probability there. You could be at 35% win rate with a, a four to one or a five to one and doing very well thanks may not suit everybody and that's really where we come to um, if we take the earlier example of this um, most people will be fine as soon as you get this small uh, move like this um, it's it's the reaction of traders and I, i've already alluded to it when you start running into two losses and you get your third loss then then the position changes uh, I'll, okay so and it and it's it's given a good tick because you only lost half the size of the position say for the next one 
but then you've only one half the size on the next one. And then the next one, of course, you put the you, you put the win in, right? You put the size back up again because you know it's winning now. Had a bad run. And of course you lose, so you cut it down. And the next one, two, you may be at this point thinking, oh, I'll keep it at a lower rate for now. And you only have to change five of the of the winners to all of a sudden only be on a break-even situation. So only by changing five winners, the size of the positions on the five winners. Okay, if you've got a couple of losers in there, it might be, you, you know, it may change. Again, it will change the law of statistics and the numbers. Uh, but five, if you make lose five winners, if you've changed them, it will bring you down to break even. So I'll leave you to think about that one. However, the reality of the stats is one thing, but unless you can stick to acceptance, that's another. So the stats are there and it's acceptance. Um, now, there are many external factors, of course, that may or may not affect the outcome. I think overall, looking back in my trading, these are quite balanced. There are times when it's really annoying because you get stopped out on what was looking a really good trade because Trump has just posted um, he doesn't like um, someone else. <laughs> um, I'm sure there'll be someone else he finds it he can, doesn't like, and and all of a sudden the markets go all over the place, stops you out. Sometimes you may be on the right side of that, and he he says he doesn't like someone, and you, your trade goes flying. I think overall they probably largely balance themselves out over the long term. It's the internal factors that you should be controlling, and really your mindset, because the statistics themselves uh, will be the statistics, and they'll they'll keep coming. It's how you react to what you're getting, and that is that's the key thing. Um, your your reaction can blow the stats completely out of the water. Sometimes, you, you miraculously, they, I say miraculously, but sometimes it, it just works that you've gone the right way, and it almost. Um, underlines and, and, and gives you more thought that you should continue in that way because you're getting great results, but there's only a matter of time before you've uh, blown the stats properly. Um, and I've, I've, we've, we've done this in our trading room and I've asked for, for uh, cases and people have uh, sent me their, their numbers where, the, where they're constantly adjusting the amount that they're trading with. So just like an example I just showed, um, and they, they sit there at break even, which is, you know, okay, we're trading with a lot of people losing. It's not a bad place, but this is why a lot of people sit there in that break-even territory so often when they do, they're just about on the edge of it and they they, they think they're going to be successful, uh, but um, they manage to just sort of grab the defeat from the jaws of victory and they just get that last one in and they just, oh, and it's that you know, moment. Personally, personally, I believe that having good quality sets may ensure you have an edge in the market, and that's the that's the most important thing. The rest is up to you. Now you will have seen Charlie's put out a trade and mindset um, uh, course. I would strongly recommend you look at something like that. Personally, if you're looking at stats, the two go hand in hand. Unless you, as I've said here, the internal factors you uh, is that what is really what you can be. That's the thing you can control. Uh, or should be controlling. You may not be able to control it, but this is where you look. Look, I'll put a link on at the end of this video. But it's the mindset that that so often blows stats out of the water, and the adjusting and the the constant um, third party or you, you're the third party in this, and that's uh, that's that's uh, as I say, grabbing the defeat from the jaws of victory. Um, so there you go. That's my just my thoughts of understanding statistics in trading.